it begins. No, this isn't a story about the greatest first love or the end of an age, but it's my story. Who am I? I'm Gia. You can call this a dossier if you will, or my diary. <laughs> I just think dossier kind of sounds cooler. <laughs> I don't know what was going on. I thought I was doing everything right. Wasn't I doing everything right? I don't know. The beginning of my life, I didn't know what the journey would be to get me here. Hell, I, I didn't even know there was a journey. I just knew I was born in the wrong body. Renee, my mom, brought me up to be the sweetest little girl a family could love. An artist, a musician. I would go to school and work my ass off to get the best grades. All for her. She told me that I couldn't do anything wrong, but maybe that was because she thought I was going to do it all according to the book she and everybody else wrote. I wish it was an easier story to tell, but it isn't. Growing up, I had two older brothers, Jake, the brother closest in age to me by two years, and Alex, who's 10 years older, but both of them are butts, <laughs> but they're still my brothers. <laughs> when I was younger, I didn't see any difference between us, to be completely honest. We acted the same, we played the same, we ate the same foods. I never saw anything different. To my surprise, everyone didn't see me as I saw myself. A brother. A son. Just normal like everyone else. Then all the dresses and pink came in the My Little Princess comments from my dad and I don't know who the hell he was talking to because when I looked around, there was no princess to be found, but then I realized he was staring at me, and then it all became clear. Things were terribly wrong, and who was I to tell everyone else they were wrong? Like, maybe I was wrong, so I went with the story where I was wrong. I played with the dolls, and I had the dresses, and yeah, I liked them, but sometimes the blur between the lines of if I actually liked them or if you're forced to play with something over and over and over just becomes an afterthought like, yeah, okay, I guess I'll do this, and so I did. I don't know. When I was around 14, I remember being home alone took this opportunity to dress as I saw fit. A man. I wasn't particularly overtly masculine at the time, but I remember feeling pretty happy for the time. I left the house and I remember feeling so proud of my outfit. <laughs> it was a warm day, I was on my way to my best friend Eleanor's house and nothing could break the confidence and pure joy I had. As so I thought. Just past the shop right on Avenue C, somebody walking behind me shouts faggot at me. I ignore the slur and continue to walk, but I hear the word again. Closer. Faggot! I look back and somebody's running towards me. They presume older. Stronger. So I ran. I ran from Avenue C to Avenue A until I got to a strip of houses where they all had long driveways. I ran up one of the driveways and pretended it was my home. I heard the person shout for a last time, FAGGOT! Until I hear footsteps slowly get farther and farther. I waited behind that person's house for about 30 minutes before I felt safe enough to run to Eleanor's house, which was three blocks away from where I was. I remember my heart feeling like it was going to beat out of my chest. My eyes were so full of tears I could barely see and my body shaking so bad. This was one of the first panic attacks I'd ever had. I got into the hallway of Eleanor's apartment. I wiped my eyes, took a deep breath, and didn't let her see the fear and hurt that I had just gone through. I was coming over her house and I didn't want her 
to scare her and prolong the hurt that I was already feeling in my heart. Through the years, I always think about that time, and it was truly one of the scariest things I have ever experienced in my life. I haven't talked much about the experience, and I haven't dealt with the hurt, if I'm going to be completely honest. It hurts way too much to talk about. Saying this now, my hands are shaking and my heart's beating fast. I feel like I'm being chased all over again for being a faggot. <laughs> I know being me was never the easiest option, but it's my only option. My favorite quote is, just because something burns bright doesn't mean it's gonna burn forever. So all these people around you saying you've got so much further to go, it's gonna get worse before it gets better. I don't know. I don't know if that's true. It comes from a band named The Front Bottoms. And I think it means that you can't just expect things to get better or to stay the same. You have to constantly work for it. And I like that because it seems real. I want to be real. Thank you for listening. Sincerely, G.